Today, I am joined by a drummer and music producer who is about to release a new song which fuses two very different genres. Welcome to Pario Magazine, Alexander Flood. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good morning. How is uh, life treating you at the moment now that things are sort of opening back up again? Yeah, yeah, things are starting to get busy, which is which is very nice to to kind of finally get back to that that level of uh, I guess working and, and collaborating with people and, and creating new things. It's nice to be, um, yeah, nice to be busy again. So, yeah, I imagine. Uh, so before we chat about the upcoming single, <clears throat> uh, All for the Pocket, can you tell our audience sort of a little bit about who you are and how you started down this creative journey? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm an Adelaide based, uh, as you said earlier, drummer, um, and kind of multi-percussionist, um, composer, producer. Um, I do a lot of session work here in Adelaide with, um, with a bunch of local kind of, uh, creative original music artists. Um, but obviously I write and produce my own music. So, um, yeah, I've been playing, playing drums and learning music for close to 20 years now, um, which is obviously most of my life uh and and yeah just getting kind of set up ready to go for this second record of mine that we're going to release early next year and the the few upcoming singles very very soon um and that's kind of yeah that's that's me in a very a very small nutshell i suppose <laughs> yep when did you sort of first discover that passion for uh, the drums firstly i imagine and then music production totally totally I was eight years old when I started learning drums and the reason for me wanting to learn music was not, I suppose, your conventional, uh, reasoning. My, my, a few of my best friends when I was eight years old were learning music and would kind of leave class to, to go have music lessons. I'd leave class for, you know, that half an hour block once a week, whatever it was. Um, so yeah, I decided, Hey, I, I want to, I want in on this. That's a, so that's a good way to get I, I, exactly. It was, it was purely, at least from my perspective, that's what I was, that was what was in my head was let me, uh, kind of tag along with my friends and, and skip some class. So the following year I kind of signed up for lessons, but I wasn't paired because at that mm -hmm. age we were kind of paired in group lessons because my two friends were already paired together. Didn't click in my head that I wouldn't be paired with them. So I was paired with some other person. Uh, which meant that it was kind of less of a hang and more of a, okay, we're here to learn drums. Uh, so yeah, very quickly that just kind of, it, it, uh, I fell in love with it and it, it kind of took over my, uh, my trajectory, my journey a little bit. Um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty, pretty immediate thing. I, I feel I connected with, with the instrument and, and then very soon after that started kind of joining some of the ensembles that, uh, like, you know, orchestras and whatnot that the, that the school offered. And then kind of moving on to like high school and things, I was just submerged in, in, uh, everything that I could be. That was, that was music. You know, my week was just full, um, Monday to Friday with whatever commitments after school, before school, during school, kind of, kind of music stuff. Um, and then outside of, you know, outside of music, uh, sorry, outside of school commitments and, and really just, uh, living and breathing, playing drums at that stage, which was, which was, uh, the dream really that is, it is the dream. That's still a dream. Um, and then kind of towards the end of my high schooling, I started to, I guess, develop an interest in composition, but also started to experiment. And I took a, a class called composing and arranging, which was kind of, my, I, I suppose my first, um, proper go at, you know, jotting down ideas and, and trying to, uh, work out stuff on the fly and, and sit in front of a keyboard, even though, you know, I'm not a piano player, um, sit in front of a keyboard and, and develop enough, uh, I suppose, you know, shapes and movement to be able to create and compose and, and, and then, you know, giving that to, to musicians to play and seeing how it kind of sounds and seeing how we can shape it. And that's really where that, um, that stuff began was, uh, towards the end of high school. Okay. Were drums always the instrument that you were drawn to, or did you try others to begin as well? Um, at home we had a piano, uh, 
uh, I didn't personally learn it, but my sister uh, was, you know, had piano lessons. This is bef well before uh, I was learning drums, I believe. Um, and my grandfather was an opera singer. Aside from those two, uh, I guess, influences, if you call them influences from my sister learning piano, uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of music um, at home. And so the first proper um, experience that I had playing music and learning music was kind of, uh, yeah, as soon as, as soon as I started learning the drums at school. Um, but very quickly, I did um, kind of develop an, a, a kind of bigger interest in rhythm and um, I, I suppose membranophones as a, uh, as a whole, not just, you know, the drum kit, but, but all sorts of other drums from other, uh, regions of the world and other, you know, cultures of music and other ethnic groups and things like that. So my interest in, in drumming is really a global interest, not just sort of focused on the Western drum set as we know it. Um, and so yeah, during high school, I definitely spent a lot of my time learning and, and researching and uh, kind of listening to all these different uh, styles of music and, and sounds and, and kind of folkloric um, recordings and things like that to, to obviously learn more about it. But at the end of the day, it was just, a, I was really passionate about it. So I just wanted to wrap my head around it and, and expose myself to more of that. So um, yeah, that, that's been a huge part of my kind of development. And then that's, that's really helped lead into my compositional style and, and kind of arranging style um, with including influences and, and different, I suppose, different styles of playing and creating and, um, and the physical sounds that, that it kind of comes down to using, using a lot of those uh, kind of a lot of instruments from different, different regions of the world is, is a big part of kind of the music that I've been writing. Um, so yeah, that's, that's certainly kept me busy. Yeah, like typically when people think of a drummer, they're sort of picturing the, the drummer in a rock band or something. Is it that wide in, um, interest in the drums as a, a group from around the world that led you down this more jazz uh, eclectic path with the music? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that put me on uh, this trajectory uh, into, I suppose, the more you know creative, improvised um, context of vernacular, uh, would have been, uh, my, one of my earliest drum teachers, I think, I believe my second drum teacher when I was maybe 10, um, a guy called a local guy called Joel prime, who's now living in London. Um, uh, after teaching me for a while, he, he brought a USB in to the lesson and on the USB, you know, this is like probably back in 2000 and I want to say like 2008 or something, 2007, maybe. So, you know, the capacity of a USB was much, much smaller than what it is now. So on this USB was maybe 75 to a hundred songs, like little, you know, MP3s or WAV files. Um, and took that home, put it on my, uh, I guess back then iPod, whatever it was. And that was the first music that I kind of actively sat down and listened to, as opposed to, you know, just hearing uh, maybe more passively. Um, so, so the music was made up of, uh, I suppose mostly, uh, you know, what would, what would, uh, refer to as, I suppose, jazz music, but a lot of like tower of power stuff, a lot of kind of, uh, more contemporary fusion music. Um, a lot of like chick career, weather report, Dave Weckl band, uh, what else was in there? Yeah, a bunch of Tower of Power, just a different mix of music, John McLaughlin stuff. Um, but being exposed to that, A, so early, and B, being exposed to exclusively that music early on, I think very quickly set that uh, set that path. And, and it's not that it was... I, I personally don't feel that uh, I grew to love that music because it was the only thing I listened to early on, but I, I genuinely... Um, from when I started listening to that music developed even more of an interest in, in, you know, drumming. And I think I, I, uh, focused more after that because I had more, more context to more reason to actually, you know, work on these, you know, technical things or, or whatever it was on the drums. I had more reason and more context to do that, 
you know, knowing that there was this music out there that I'd, you know, hopefully one day be playing and be able to play and create. So uh, listening to that music early on, just those like whatever, 7,500 songs on repeat really helped to uh, help me discover what it was that I was into musically at the time and, and you know, push me forward more in that in that sense okay uh, and now for the the new single or for the pocket that sort of blends two genres which i probably wouldn't have imagined being blended together jazz mm. and hip-hop how did that sort of idea come about good question i um yeah i studied jazz at university um and that was a very so that was three years of kind of bebop basically so really straight ahead uh kind of jazz standards playing for for three years which was great um but when you're in that environment for uh, you know however long and when you're playing the same sort of thing you you do develop a you know desire to play very different music and so while i was really enjoying the jazz stuff and and listening to a lot of uh you know a lot of jazz recordings there was this uh there was this other side of me this other personality that that kind of wanted to kind of be diving more into beat music and and at the time i was also listening to a you know a lot of a lot of kind of beat driven music and and i suppose more contemporary uh more contemporary stuff so what ended up happening was I, uh, a lot of my time was, uh, a lot of my practice time rather was split between working on the jazz vernacular stuff for my university degree. Um, and then when I would come home, you know, I'd have the bigger kit set up and I'd be not practicing jazz here. I'd be, I'd be practicing, uh, totally different music. So, uh, gradually over, over time, uh, these two, I guess, separate forces started to merge together. And that's where I felt my sound, uh, really started to emerge. Um, like my, I guess what I would consider to be, yeah, my sound that, that really came out of the, the amalgamation of this kind of jazz background and this, um, more contemporary, I suppose, hip hop beat based, um, you know, electronic kind of background. So, um, and at the time I had also started playing with, um, a new, well, it was new at the time. It's not new now, but a band of mine, a razor description. And that, that was just fully like electronic dance music kind of stuff. So we had these, these two very different forces working, uh, you know, working at the same time. And yeah, as, as I continued more with, with each of those that kind of bled into my compositional style and, um, I guess because of a lot of the music I was listening to, it was just a very natural progression for me to, to bring together these different influences. But at the same time, I do see a lot of relevance and a lot of connection and similarity between, um, you know, uh, contemporary improvised music or jazz music and hip hop music. Um, I suppose in a sense of improvisation and, and sort of off the cuff um, spontaneity is pretty, a pretty core kind of element of both of those music or can be, um, and, and the amount of kind of interplay that can happen and, and, you know, shape shifting and, uh, on the fly arranging that can kind of go into those, those styles and the, you know, longer form compositions that can, uh, can kind of happen, lend themselves to to you know both jazz music and hip-hop music so there is a lot of crossover i see and, and uh you know there's a lot of artists like say someone like robert glasper who's who's you know embodying both of those influences just so well into his own you know unique sound um so yeah that was that was kind of how i guess it started um from there a friend of mine i was overseas um i spent uh, a good part of a year overseas in 2019 and while i was there while i was in new york a friend of mine messaged me and said hey you got to check out this guy nelson dialect who's from adelaide i'm from adelaide he's from adelaide we were both in new york um we didn't mm -hmm. actually manage to connect we didn't yeah we didn't actually manage <laughs> to connect while we were there 
uh i we just it didn't line up we i messaged him and, and we we got chatting but anyway i checked out his uh i checked out kind of his discography um and immediately was like yeah this is this is the sort of music that i want to i want to be involved with like this is really really cool stuff um so fast forward however long 12 months after that um as i started writing this second album of mine the the, um, the space between which is coming out very soon um he he was definitely there was there was a few specific artists who were on my mind the whole time like i'm i'm writing this track thinking this is what i'm hearing on top so the music came together um i had a really clear idea of um for the for the track that nelson's on or for the pocket i had a really clear idea of how i wanted the the music and the structure to kind of fall together and and the influences within that but knowing his kind of uh person musical personality and knowing his style and and kind of what he's capable of i didn't want to give him parameters as such i wanted to just uh, get you know have him listen to the track and and whatever comes out comes out so he was in new york at the time i, I was back home here when i was writing the track i sent him the demo he he ran with it did his thing he then went to he was in london uh you know a few months after that which is where he recorded it um he did a session in london and then sent the stems over it wasn't till he was back in australia that we so this this year yeah well he recorded this year as well so earlier this year when he was back in australia uh he uh yeah, we got together and finished the track off and then kind of filmed the music video. And that's, that's kind of what went into, uh, the creation of it. Really. It was a very cross cross global kind of collaboration from, from the, I composed the parts, uh, the, the instrumental parts here. He composed the, the vocal parts, uh, over in New York, recorded it in London. Okay. We finished it together here. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's been a lot that's kind of gone into this track and, um, not to mention, obviously, all the other uh, musicians and artists that have contributed to it and, and made it what it is. But did you sort of give him no, uh, like, directives or anything on what you wanted from the lyrics? Or did he have, like, full free reign? We, we, had, uh, we had a couple chats on the phone about ideas um, and kind of how, how we could both relate to it. I, I obviously, uh, I wanted not i i thought you know it would make sense for us for it to be something for us uh to both be able to relate to so uh yeah what ended up kind of coming out of that was was realizing that as a drummer and as a rapper um to one thing that is that is so fundamentally important to to the both of us is is i suppose rhythm but you know the pocket and and serving the pocket and and making something feel good making something feel uh right for the recording for the track for the style whatever it is um so that's kind of where you know all for the pocket came from was was that idea that it, uh it's it's i guess it's an ode to ode to the pocket um you know from his perspective and from my perspective and and it's also kind of a play on words um i guess it also references the the things that we sometimes have to do for the pocket meaning for um you know for the paycheck the, the the different you know as an artist and as a musician the the different things you find yourself uh sometimes doing or, or being involved with uh the different musical projects sometimes things are you know right up your alley sometimes things are way out of your comfort zone and you you know uh on the edge of your seat the whole time so uh yeah sort of a sort of a, a spin on words in that sense as well uh, and this album, uh, this single is like a, a glimpse into that album. Is this a good signal signal of what we can expect from the album when it hits as well? Yeah, I think so. On a on a kind of uh, creative level, it's 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 definitely a. Uh, what, what I will say is that the album is very diverse. So while this track is is kind of um, you'll hear a particular style. Um, there's a lot of uh, diverse music and, and kind of other styles within the record. So, um, 
there is a lot of continuity musically and sonically, but at the same time, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get all sorts when you're able to check out the record, you'll be, uh, yeah, you'll be transported all sorts of different places musically. Brilliant. And for the album, you're also planning to release like a documentary on the creative process. How did you find that documentary process as well? That was a huge uh, undertaking, I must say. Um, I worked with a very good friend of mine, David Resky, who's uh, his, his kind of company's Pink Sun Productions, a uh, brilliant filmmaker. And we kind of both collaborated on the, the I guess, creation of this. So we, doc we documented all the sessions or the recording, um, which in itself is obviously, there's a lot, a lot that goes into filming a session like that. But then, yeah, sitting down and really kind of plotting out what, what is it that we want to say? What is it that I want to say through, you know, what I want to convey through, uh, through actually speaking? Because a lot of the music is, um, you know, instrumental um on the record so this was an opportunity for me to i guess be a bit more direct and a bit more literal with uh but at the same time you know it's, it's sort of more of a behind the scenes look um but it still very much conveys what the record is um is about from you know my my perspective and and how we made it who was involved um kind of the the different the different artists and different collaborators and it also shows the, you know, uh, how collaborative it was in a sense of half of the material was recorded here. Half of, you know, some of the material recorded in New York, some recorded in London, some recorded in, in uh, Washington, DC, some recorded in Los Angeles. Uh, so, so it's, it, yeah, kind of, um, you know, at a time like this where I couldn't actually have physically recorded this anywhere else, or I, uh, I couldn't have had all of the musicians here recording i guess it's it's a it's a glimpse uh uh like a like a freeze frame of of 20, 2021 sort of um so yeah it's uh it's kind of telling the story of the record and and, and the making of it and um it was a, a big undertaking to get it done but um I'm, I'm pretty stoked with it and it's uh yeah it's going to be exciting to release that as well yeah i guess it'll be nice to have sort of those two separate products as little memory pieces of this record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, was it just that idea of obviously the state of the world that made you want to do the documentary or is this something you sort of think you might do moving forward as well on subsequent records? As a consumer, uh, when I'm listening to music, I'm always, there's always, if, if I'm listening to something that I'm really enjoying, uh, often you get to the end of the record and you want more, right? You want to, you, you go and read the liner notes or you, you go find any, you know, behind the scene footage that you can, or you may have already seen it on social media when they were making it, whatever. Um, for me, I always like to dig deeper and find, find out more, learn more, learn the why, the how, who, that sort of stuff, uh, which, you know, sometimes you don't have all that information when you're listening. So, uh, from in that sense, I wanted to, yeah, to be able to kind of block all of that information into a another kind of, uh, what's the word piece of media, another kind of digestible piece of, uh, piece of visual and, and kind of, uh, audio media. So, um, there's that, but then also, yeah, just, just challenging myself to do things that are out of my comfort zone and, and, and trying to upscale the you know overall value of the, the project and, and things like that that was also a huge drive and and it has definitely put me out of my comfort zone i've spent uh i couldn't tell you how many hours in front of final cut pro just like <laughs> working on color grading and dave and i have just yeah sat for sat for many hours um many cups of tea <laughs> just uh just shedding the the cut but yeah it's um it's I'm pretty stoked with how it's come together and and then yeah we've got 10 there's 10 tracks on the record so we've got 10 different videos uh one for each track as well as the the doco so lots of uh lots of video bombardment awesome where is the best place for our audience to sort of follow your journey and obviously those documentaries when they're here yeah the best i'd say the best platform to to check out this stuff 
uh, will be Instagram. That's where I'm, I suppose, most active. Um, and that's kind of, kind of a really, uh, what's the word? Interactive place as well. I'll be, you know, chatting to people and, and, uh, yeah, chatting to chatting to audiences, but also uh, check out my Facebook website. All the all the releases will be up there. All the videos um, you'll be able to find kind of all my stuff uh, on on any of those any of those platforms. And is the Instagram handle just Alexander Flood or Alexander Flood? Oh yeah, that's that's important. <laughs> Alexander uh, underscore Flood, um, and then just Alexander Flood Music on Facebook and alexanderfloodmusic.com.au. Uh, and if you want to buy the record when it's out or pre-order, um, Bandcamp will be the best place to do that. Um, but it's also available, it will be available on all kind of platforms across the board. Um, but yeah, Bandcamp is a, is a very cool, cool place for supporting artists and kind of supporting music and, 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 you know, creative projects like this. So. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, and then sort of lastly, once the record drops, are you looking to head out on tour around Australia or potentially overseas now that the borders are open? At this stage, I, yes, I, I definitely, uh, am, am working towards, uh, booking some shows, uh, interstate and overseas. Um, and hopefully by, yeah, hopefully by mid next year, we'll be, we'll be taking the, taking the band out, taking the music out for, for a spin around some different places, but, um, yeah, I've got a couple, couple local shows booked here, booked here. The next, next stage is like interstate overseas. So look out for those dates. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with the release and hopefully the tours and everything moving forward. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks for the chat.